So if this war, this potential war that would happen between China and India over like this border region, these disputed territories, like you mentioned, some of these territories have been disputed for decades. Do you think that other countries like the U.S. would get involved in this or would they be more likely to see it as like just a border dispute issue? Well, uh, look at the recent example uh, of what is happening in Ukraine. Uh, Whether the rest of the world is involved physically in it or not, the fact is that a number of countries uh, are out there helping Ukraine in a variety of ways. So uh, who is helping Russia? Uh, No one has come forward openly, but there are claims that, you know, China is sympathetic to Russia or Iran is supplying some drones. So... The warfare today is much more complex than it was, let's say, five years back or 10 years back and requires uh, inputs in a variety of ways. For example, uh, intelligence need not be persons on the ground. Uh, They are also necessary, but it can be eyes in the sky, the satellites. Uh, It can be uh, radio uh, eavesdropping. It can be electronic signals and it can be supply of armaments. For example, some of the missiles being supplied by America and Ukraine are having a deadly effect. Uh, The artillery duels that uh, Ukraine is fighting now and there's a counter from Russia would not have been so effective had other countries not supplied them to Ukraine. So any war, especially a war which assumes a certain... uh, significance or or danger level uh, cannot be a a single country operation any longer. Uh, Second thing is uh, Ukraine-Russia, of course, is one example, but it is an example uh, which is more or less in isolation, that it is a fight between these two and the others are concerned. Uh, But that does not stop there because, as I mentioned earlier, Uh, Ukraine's wheat supply is uh, upsetting uh, the routine and the lives and the livelihood of many countries and many people in the world. Now, expand it to a major level. Uh, Let's say in case of uh, Taiwan-China conflict or India-China conflict, the effects would be humongous because uh, what will happen between them is not just fighting between soldiers or fighting in terms of equipment or fighting in terms of cyber warfare, let's say. China is aiming to change the world order as it has existed since 1945. You see, after 1945, a new world order was was devised and which had worked very well till now uh, in terms of uh, how human rights should be viewed by the world, how sovereign states are equal in every respect, how uh, disputes should be solved, how UN should act uh, as a a peacekeeper, uh, how uh, legal issues between countries should be uh, handled in the Hague. So there was a, and of course not to forget about the financial mechanisms, uh, IMF, World Bank and so on, So there was a whole chain uh, of institutions which had been established and which were called the New World Order and which had served the world very well in terms of human dignity, in terms of human interaction, in terms of national interaction. Now, China wants to have a new world order to its design. And that is why there are two countries that are standing in its way. One is US uh, because it is the most powerful country country as of now. And second is India, which is the largest democracy in the world. So China feels that these two countries are the threat to its global domination. So what is at stake uh, is is really uh, China's desire to become the capo del capo, capo of the world. Well, so if China's goal is to create this new world order, don't you think that doing something like invading Taiwan or invading India would actually hurt them? Wouldn't that make the rest of the world like say, hey, this is an aggressive state. We can't let them have that kind of power. 
Uh, the war for Ukraine definitely hurt Putin and Russia's standing in the world with a lot of countries. Wouldn't the same happen to China? Absolutely. Uh, you are asking this question. I wish more people in the world would be asking this question. That uh, uh, what does China gain by uh, invading Taiwan or having a war with India or some other country? I've already uh, mentioned uh, what is China's ambition and oh, what does it uh, uh, wish to do once uh, it has the capability of ordering a new uh, global system. So whether that uh, desire ultimately uh, comes about is, is uh, yet to be seen. But to give you an example of how rash China can be, uh, let me take you back to 1945. Europe was devastated. Uh, Europe was in ruins uh, from Germany to France to England to, you know, wherever you went. Uh, there, were, there was rubble all around, uh, which happens when you have a, a huge uh, war like the World War II. So what did America do? America introduced the Marshall Plan. America did not impose punitive interest rates on Germany or France that you should give me back the money uh, once, once you have your building ready or industry ready. Uh, Marshall Plan was a gift uh, to Europe at a time when it needed succor, it needed uh, help, it needed salve on its wounds, with the war wounds. And it worked beautifully. Europe was rejuvenated. In comparison, what is China doing? See the condition of Sri Lanka. The punitive interest rates that China has imposed are single-handedly responsible for the ruin that China, uh, Sri Lanka has become, the financial ruin that it has become. And that is finding it extremely difficult to dig itself out of that huge hole. Similarly, the other countries which were given, you know, Chinese yuans or whatever currency it was, for BRI, that hugely expensive uh, infrastructure project, are now finding it difficult to pay back that money because that is a transportation project meant for China's strategic interests, for China's overlordship. It cannot have any economic value unless there's supporting industry along with that in infrastructure project. And there is virtually zero industry. So how do they, these poor countries or these countries pay China back? They're finding it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to do that. The second thing is, look at Europe also. There's a railway line which China has built from China to Europe, to the other end of Europe, uh, thinking that it will transport goods there uh, as an alternative to the sea route. Once that railway line was built, what did the Europeans find? That over a four-month period, only $300 million worth of goods were transported on that railway line. Whereas one of the four Chinese major ports handles $300 million of goods every four hours. So what is the point of having that railway line when sea route is so much cheaper and so much more convenient? So China does not think in terms of the American generosity of Marshall Plan or in terms of the recipients. Uh, it only thinks of what suits its interests best. And in terms of the infrastructure that it was building, in terms of roads and so on, uh, it was employing largely its own companies. So money was going from one Chinese hand to the other Chinese hand. And in between, the states concerned were left with the huge debt. So Chinese ambitions, Chinese desires, Chinese uh, motivations need to be examined at every turn. 